However, the war itself will spread out for about 200 miles north and south. It will extend to the east of the Mediterranean Sea, will border the west. When all the world's armies are assembled in the valley that surrounds Mount Megiddo, they will be staging a resistance front against the advancing armies of the Orient. It will be the world's worst nightmare, nuclear holocaust at its, at its worst, a full-out nuclear bombardment between the armies of the Antichrist and the kings of the East at that point. Uh, John reveals in Revelation chapter 16 that the Euphrates River will be dried up so the kings of the East can advance towards Israel. When the Antichrist takes over rule in Jerusalem, the kings of the East, China and all her uh, allies, the Asian nations, will advance toward Israel to try and gather the, uh, and destroy the Antichrist and take over Israel for themselves. The Antichrist will, in effect, gather all the world's armies to fight off this Chinese invasion to Israel. It is when all these Israels meet under the pretext of warring against each other that the Lord will return and they will stop fighting each other to fight against the return of the Lord. And so I think that's pretty much Satan's game plan there. Uh, is that when the Antichrist is ruling from Jerusalem, the kings of the east will come to fight against his, his rulership of Israel. And so what they're going to do is dam up the Euphrates River. I and mean, we already know that's possible with Turkey and Syria. They can, they can prohibit water from going into the Euphrates. They can even dam it up and dry it up. And that's what's going to happen. And these, these kings of these, these armies, these Chinese armies, are going to march right up the Euphrates um, River towards Israel. And then as they get towards Israel, and there's probably uh, just millions and millions, hundreds of millions of them, that's when the, the second coming of the Lord will, will appear. And I think Satan's going to know that. But the reason uh, he's not going to let people know that offhand, uh, it's just going to look like a war between China and the New World Order crowd, the whole Antichrist armies that are in Jerusalem, and, and China being at war with them. See, and Yahushua predicted the sudden of his return. He said, For his lightning coming out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. He said, Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And perhaps the sign of the Son of Man will, will be a gigantic celestial image of Yahushua flashed upon the heavens for all to see. This will explain how all men suddenly recognize who he is, and see the skies from his piercing at the cross. And what are these clouds with him? These are the saints uh, returning with Jesus, uh, wearing white robes. In Hebrews 12, 1, believers are referred to as clouds of witnesses. And the clouds then would be all of the church age believers returning in immortal glorified bodies with Yahushua in the air. This will also include the, res the resurrected Old Testament saints. But prophet Zechariah predicted, And the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee. In Zechariah 14.5. And so that kind of negates anybody who says that the saints aren't returning with him. Because they are. You can read Zechariah. The Apostle John speaks of the apparel of the saints as they return with Christ. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. In Revelation 19.14. He explains the white linen robes. And to her the saints was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And so this is where pretty much the whole battle is going to happen. It's going to be in Jerusalem. And you can read about it in Revelation chapter 19. And behold, I, and I saw, um, I think it be about 19, I'll start with 11. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth, doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture, and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together under the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast of the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And how does this war go? And it says in verse 20, 
And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet, the beast being the Antichrist, and he with him the false prophet, that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had, deceived, that had received the mark of the beast, and that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which, which sword proceedeth out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. And see, this kind of throws out the whole thing, too, as well. You'll hear people that claim that Satan himself is going to rule on earth. He can't himself rule on earth because the Antichrist and the false prophet, the two leaders that are, that are going to take over this whole new world order, this new age that's coming upon the earth, they're cast into the lake of fire. Satan is captured and cast into the bottomless pit. And so, actuality, there's three different beings. There's Satan, there's Antichrist, and there's the false prophet. And so, the, yeah, I mean, the Antichrist and the false prophet both get their power from Satan, but Satan himself is not in human form as the Antichrist or the false prophet because there's three different beings, folks. So that quickly throws out the, the Satan's coming in his own form idea. And you'll read that eventually Satan does join them in the lake of fire. It says in Revelation 20.10, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And that will happen after he's allowed to have his one last attempt after the 1,000 year millennial reign to deceive the Lord's people. See, what happens is after the, the second coming of Christ, and I've kind of described that, comes down to the, the Valley of Jehoshaphat, Armageddon, uh, some call it the Valley of Megiddo, different names for it. This, there's going to be a, a World War Four meeting there. I mean, Satan's going to be, the Antichrist is going to be there, the false prophet, all those involved with the New World Order, they have their armies there. And China is going to come up against uh, the Antichrist and the false prophet and all, the arm, all their armies are going to go to war against them to take over Jerusalem for themselves or, or probably just to eliminate uh, the Antichrist and the false prophet. And so what happens is when the Chinese cross over into Jerusalem, and at that point is when Yahushua will arrive at the second coming of Christ and he just destroys them all. Uh, then we go into the 1,000 year millennial reign. And I read about that in my article, Second Coming of Christ. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit, because uh, mm, there's going to be a, um, a judgment of the goats and the sheep of the goats and the nations who had taken care of Israel and those who were wicked towards Israel. And again, with Israel not being a land, but Israel being the people, the people who worshipped and followed the Lord today are Israel. You know, Israel today isn't a bloodline Israel. It's not a land with borders Israel. Uh, the Israel of the New Testament is, uh, is, is those people who worship and follow and keep the commandments of the Most High. And they follow Him. That's the Israel that are His people. No longer being tied to bloodlines. No longer being tied to a certain race of people. Israel today is, is all races, all people. All bloodlines is anybody who follows and worships uh, the Son of God. And so uh, that's pretty much uh, the, the Israel that's talking about when you, when you care for these people. Find that scripture. You can read about it in Matthew twenty five thirty one. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, peoples, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on one side, on, one, on the right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed among my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Then he shall say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels, and shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. And this is when it begins the millennial reign right there in Matthew 25. Because at the time of the second coming, there's going to be many righteous here on the earth, not all being raptured away. They're going to